so hi everyone so in our previous video i have explained you uh, what is api management how it will work and what are the features of api management like uh, policies what is apm policies what are products in apim uh, and also what is the developer portal in the apm so in now today we'll look at how to create an apm in the azure portal then i'll explain you how to add the policies in the apim okay so we'll quickly go to the apm portal so i have created an apm for you uh, because uh, you know apm uh, while creating the apm it will take uh, 10 to 15 minutes of time i don't want to waste your time so i just create i quickly created a test apm dev name so i just created an apm so this is the default apm once you once the apm is created once the service is created when i click on that service so this is the default page that we will land it to okay fine when uh, i explained you uh, in the previous videos i explained you what are all these like overview you can see the overview uh, pricing tiers so all details about these are uh, api apm when you click on get started you can see that uh, how many apis so uh, what are the apis that we have we can see the portal overview developer portal overview we can also have the analytics of these uh, apim okay we can also have a uh, number of users we can give access to them for the for development purpose and also we can have subscriptions based on the subscriptions user will access the, the apis so you know what is activities logs like uh, it will it will log each and every activity that is performed by the user on this apim let's say uh, deleting an api or creating an api uh, executing an api all these activities is being logged here okay so tags you know uh, we can have uh, key value pairs of tags to uh, differentiate uh, each api uh, each resources in the azure portal fine we'll quickly go to the apis as i explained you uh, earlier what is an api you know a apis in the apm is nothing but you know it's a collection of apis okay it's a collection of apis right apm it provides a platform for managing and exposing apis yeah apm is not apm is not directly an a api so api is nothing but you know it provides a platform for managing and exposing the different apis that that we developed for uh, for the web applications okay with azure apm itself is not api don't confuse between apm and api okay it allow to create and host and manage multiple apis within the service okay so uh, you can ask me like uh, just now we created the apim and what is this echo api so by default apim uh, will add this echo api okay so if you see what is echo api uh, so echo api service is nothing but you know uh, this is a service is used to test azure api management okay this is a public api you can you can use it for the testing purpose so by default uh, azure uh, will add this echo api in our portal if not we can delete it but we'll continue with the uh, same api in the next two upcoming videos i will show you how to add uh, another um, i mean how to add the uh, apis that you developed in the azure api okay currently uh, echo api is uh, by default uh, we are getting this api so once you click on this api you will get many operations as i told like post put delete these are all the operations that we have in this api okay so these are the operations create modify remove resources whatever let's say we'll create a resource just we'll try to uh, execute so you are in currently you are on the design tab so you don't have uh, a, uh, you don't have an option to execute this api okay so just go to a test tab we'll make this full screen okay just go to the test tab you can see here we can give our request what are the requests that we want to currently we'll leave it as default okay click on send once you click on send you are getting the response right you can also send multiple times this is a public api you, uh, uh, we can do whatever we want okay so even we can receive the resources once you click on the re re resources retrieve resource click on send you are getting 200 okay so you are re receiving the resources fine we'll i'll explain you the step by step like what are the policies inbound policies and outbound policies as i told you in the earlier video 
inbound policies are nothing but before the service uh, before the request is being sent to the server this policies will execute okay and outbound policies are nothing but once we receive the response from the server before sending it to the front end application so outbound policies will execute let's go one by one what are the policies and so you can see this backend api this is the actual api url for our backend services okay fine let's go let's click on add policies there are two ways that we can add the policies like it, it can be like uh, xml based okay if you discard it you can manually add them by the azure portal itself okay fine ip filter you know ip filter is we can uh, we can filter the ips if once you give your we can give some name to this ip okay you can give the ip address from two okay so once we give the ip address only request within this range will access this uh, will access this uh, will allow will allow the request to go to the backend service okay let's say if the range is for example i'm just saying if the range is 1 to 10 the ip address is uh, if the ip address uh, is coming with the number 11 so our apm will not allow it to access the backend resource okay it will throw an error fine back we'll discard this change uh, rate limit rate limit is nothing but we, i'll show you uh, by uh, i'll quickly show you by executing this rate limit is nothing but you know we can uh, we can tell tell the apm only these many requests has to be allowed in particular time okay let's say i'll give five so only number of calls of five to be executed in time span of 60 seconds okay let's give not 60 seconds we'll give only 10 seconds okay let's leave it by default and click on save now this is something like it will allow only five times in the time span of 10 seconds Let, let's test this uh, policy okay fine click on send one two three four five six you see sixth time it is saying too many requests 429 status code error and rate limit is exceeded because we have go even only five rate limit is five let's wait for two to three seconds so once the time of 10 seconds has been exceeded it will allow again to send the request send fine see one two three four five now it will on it will not allow okay too many requests right so this is the main advantage of apim you can add as many inbound policies as you can so currently i have added just a rate limit right you can even mock the responses uh, let's say if you are not getting the response from the server you can mock the mock the response actually okay this is a great advantage uh, again next set query parameters you know uh, you can actually modify the request that you are sending it to backward i mean you can set the headers you can set the query parameters and also you can set uh, you can transform the body from xml to json or json to xml once you click on this see in the inbound policies you can give the version example and the value value of that uh, uh, value of the query parameter that you want to give here okay if the same query parameter is existed you, can, you even have the options to if you want to override it or if you want to skip that i mean if you want if you don't want to send the param to the backend service if you want to append it again or if you want to delete it these are the options that it is providing for the query parameters just go back and even headers you can in the same way same way as query parameters you can set the headers you can delete the headers you can skip the headers okay cross origin policies you know what is cross origin policies right so uh, other domains usually other domains will uh, uh, will not have access to our apim to the, our backend services so what apm does is like by default if it is star it, it allow all the domains to access our resources let's say if we want to allow only particular domains just click on full option if you want to allow only particular domains you can give the domain name here https let's say https is google.com okay slash google.com okay next is you can even allow the methods 
what are only methods that needs to be allowed let's say only get if i am getting if the request is a post operation so it will not allow okay it will throw an error even you can allow the headers you can add the headers here what are the headers it should allow and even you can exposed headers you can add the exposed headers here allow credentials or whatever it may be okay these things we can add it directly in the cross origin policies usually uh, earlier what we do is we, we, we write this uh, cross origin uh, logic everything in our web applications so but that uh, now uh, now we, apm is allowing us to write directly in the apm portal itself fine okay you can cache the response so that the time uh, you know the response uh, performance will increase the response time got decreases okay you can validate the content even whatever the, the content you are getting in the request you can validate that if it's a json or if it's a xml whatever it may be you can validate that even you can validate the jwt tokens as well you know authorization once you had just give the uh, authorization header name and if the request is not uh, if the jwt is not valid we'll throw this error okay you, it can be anything it's your wish what are the error but it should be meaningful by default it will be 401 okay you can add all this like filter validations required claims you can add the audiences for that jwt or authentication okay so you can ask me like uh, we can also edit the we can also edit this uh, directly in the xml format let's say so this is the one we have added it right directly from the uh, portal options that we have, that they have given us but even you can add same thing by manually just say click on enter now the outbound policies as well if the server is sending request uh, in a time span of 10 seconds for five more than five times uh, our apm will not allow it to take okay in this in this way we can directly uh, edit the policies as well in the xml format but more flexible uh, you can directly use the uh, developer uh, developer portal uh, to create the policies okay just scroll down you can see another policies as well so once you snow ship it, snip it so just expand it you can see the uh, portal is providing uh, this feature uh, we'll go with uh, authentic basic authentication it's simple i'll show you once you click on that it will give you the authentication uh, xml format just cut that and paste it in the inbound policies okay control v so it will give the username and we'll give the password as well okay just click on save so we'll test it if it works or not go to the uh, retrieve resource test test it and scroll down here you have an option for adding headers okay click on that click on basic authentication okay here you have an option for basic authentication a u t h not giving so long the portal is not working for me. don't think it will accept it authorization it's a jwt authorization but basic authentication it's not allowing fine uh, i think it's not scrolling down but but once you add a basic authentication here auth type called basic okay you see this or type called basic here it's not scrolling down but fine you, you need to give the username as well as password once you uh, give both of them click on send the request will be okay so i just added uh, you know by default username and password so it's allowing just go back design again add the policies these are the other pieces of okay now here i will show you uh, more policies apart from this here okay just scroll down you will see the other policies option click on that okay expand this so if you if you expand this snippet you have many other policies you can see here directly when you click on that let's say i will give you an example of authentic with basic okay basic authentication just cut this what are the logic that you have got and add it here okay you can give the username and password as well just say Srikanth 
and save it so now while sending the request the basic authentication should be th this uh, you need to send the username and also password without that it will not allow us to access the backend service see uh, let's I'll remove it now just for testing purpose okay we can also add as many policies as we can if you expand this snippet we have cache policies uh, access restriction policies we have tested this restrict caller IPs and check HTTP header uh, not check HTTP header we have validated the rate per subscription rate per key okay uh, even advanced flows like uh, control flows even other policies there are as many as we can see this transformation policies as I told we can convert the JSML to JSON to the XML or XML to JSON even we can convert the body if, if there is a you know uh, if we don't send any body we can directly uh, uh, create a body in the APM itself and send it to the backend uh, backend server you can say convert to XML to JSON transform XML using XSTL so all these features are available in APM fine in the in the upcoming series uh, I'll explain you what are products and how to use developer portal to effectively use these APIs as well as the products fine okay if you have any questions just uh, uh, please post them in the comment and subscribe to my channel to for the next videos thank you